Hi friends, Knife Detector here. And it's been a little while since I've made a video, so you know what I like to do since I, I'm not making videos every week anymore, making them kind of every couple of weeks or every few weeks, is I like to show you a bunch of knives in every video that I make. And these are knives that you know I've had for a while. These This particular group, I've never shown you before. <coughs> Excuse me. So, feeling a little under the weather. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to look at each one of these knives. We're gonna take a look at them and I'm gonna talk about them, okay? And um, let me know what you think about any of these knives that you like. Also, I wanna say that I have sold a few knives recently. Uh, you know, I've been pondering and thinking about how much is too much and so forth. And so I went ahead and I, and I sold a couple of knives. So I went ahead and I put those up and those have been bought and shipped Amigos. All right, and every once in a while I'll do that. So don't forget to check out my eBay website and like and subscribe right so first thing i want to do is i want to talk about uh two buck knives and this one right here did not come with this sheath and it did not come with this thumb stud that's an aftermarket quick thumb stud that i bought um but i really like these buck light knives and i like these a lot more than the new uh buck slim knives that are out there like the 112 slim or the 112 or the 110 slim i like these so much better and i think it's because i can get a better grip on them on the 112 and the 110 slims i just can't get a decent grip on that and i, I kind of like these because of that now these are a little thicker which means for some people they may not want to carry it on their person they may want to carry it well not in their pocket but they may want to carry it in a sheath now this one here has that line right there which dates this back to 1982 but this is basically the same steel the same type of uh and this is a buck 422 by the way um the same thickness as you would find on a regular 112 made of brass and wood right in fact i have interchanged the blade of one of these uh 422s on a buck 112 before um, uh, so I mean, I know that they just interchange pretty easily. Um, uh, I'm not sure about the newer models, but I did it on like an eighties model. So I really like this knife, the profile of the knife, the feel of the knife so much so that I added this thumb stud right here. And that just makes it really easy to open and close. Of course, it's a, it's a back lock, lock back knife. So really like this knife. Uh, like I said, this one is from 19... 92 and it did not come with this sheath in fact when i bought this it didn't have a sheath i thought about storing it in this one but this is from another buck knife but um this thumb stud keeps getting in the way so because of that i'm storing it in this one which didn't come with this one but it's pretty cool sheath it's got velcro here that doesn't work so good anymore this sheath actually came with this buck light 422 so i have another one right this one doesn't have a thumb stud yet and it's a buck light, and this is a green one. This green one actually came with this green buck sheath that has a lot of wear on it, right? A lot of pleasant, uh, pleasantly used, well-used wear. This one has the greater than arrow right there. It's a buck 422 again, which puts this as 1987. 1987. Can you think about that, guys, for a second? 19 freaking 87, and we're in 2024. So let's see, 2024 plus another 10, that's 34, plus another three. That means that this knife is about 37 years old, close to 40 years old. And this plastic has still held up pretty well. And again, this is a buck light, okay? So this knife is close to 40 years old. The plastic's held up really well. And I'm just a huge fan of this style of knife, okay? Now this one's had a little more use, it's been sharpened a little more, and it doesn't snap close. The other one does, but this one doesn't snap close. You kind of have to push it down. It does snap open. Um, I guess this, it has a little bit of wear here in the tang to where uh, some of that metal is gone. So it doesn't have the same amount of friction as it used to. But that's okay. Um, I really like this knife. And it's one that I intend to carry more regularly. Um, I like that style of knives. In fact, let me leave these out for you guys to look at while I talk about some of these others right here. Um, something about the Buck 112 that's always kind of like uh, made me feel good. You know, I, I don't know what it is about it. We all have connections to different styles of knives, but for me, the 112, and this is not a 112. This is a 422, 
but it's the same basic blade, the same blade as a 112. All right. So next, we're going to talk about a couple of others. I'm going to move these sheaths to the side. And uh, for this one, I want to show you this sheath that I bought, I think, at a stock show. Really well-made sheath. Um, it fits this knife perfectly. And uh, I'm very thankful for this knife. It was given to me by my friend, David Curley. And we send emails to each other every morning. I don't have a lot of trappers, and he recognized that. So he sent me a trapper in this beautiful orange Delrin type of... Uh, handle material and i love this knife very much thank you so much david um this is getting me back into trappers so lately i've been thinking about getting some more trappers as you can see you got the spay blade right there and then you got the the one main blade right here very nice um it's just a gorgeous case trapper um let's see i'm not sure if we can see the numbers on that a lot of stars in there case double x okay but it's just a lovely lovely trapper uh thank you so much david again for this trapper and it's just one of those things that you know it came at a time when you know i really needed to hear some good news i really did and then i checked in the mail and that was there and, and you know david i can't tell you what it means to me so thank you so much and i do carry that often i just slip it in my pocket and lately i've been putting it in this sheath because i think it just fits it just perfectly um so but but generally when i kind of want to go low profile i have it in my pocket and most jobs you know a trapper will do you know for most of the things you need throughout the day i find in my case anyway okay let's now talk about this one right here okay guys this is an old boker check this bad boy out this is about four and a half inches in the close position it's a very old boker sheep foot design I'm not sure if you can see a number there. I was kind of taken aback when I bought this one on eBay for like, I don't think nine bucks or something like that, uh, because I like the sheep foot design. If you look closely, you see it's a little narrow in the middle. And uh, to me, that looks like at some point this was crushed uh, in some way, shape or form. It was either stepped on by a big fat dude like me, or it was, uh, see a little separation there, or it was run over by something or something with a lot of pressure put down some pressure on this thing and it narrowed down right here in the middle or it could just be from really use uh, normal use of just somebody crushing down on it right but look at that cheap foot blade and it, right now it's got it's kind of sharp right right now but i think i'm going to put a better edge on that using my smith's sharpener uh belt sharpener and just run it by there and put a better edge this is an older knife i can't even think about the possible age of this knife it's got some type of a brown delrin on it my first guess would be 40s, 50s. I don't know. Tell me, guys. What do you think the age on this bad boy might be? This is really easy to carry in your pocket because it's very slim. Um, but it's big enough that you can still get a decent handle. Uh, it's important to me the feel of the knife when I'm holding on to it. And also the function. And a big sheep's foot blade like this, well, you can use it for slicing. You can use it for cutting rope. Uh, you can use it for, for anything. It's not very good at stabbing because of that dull uh, tip right there. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could probably put a point there. Uh, but this is just the kind of blade that, that I find very useful. Uh, everybody has different opinions on that. It's got the nail nape right there. A very traditional knife. And I find that nowadays, if you go look for knives like at a pawn shop or something like that, you'd be hard-pressed to find a traditional knife. Uh, most of them are modern and they have like uh, um, liner locks or frame locks, stuff like that. But I like this one. So um, I'm going to put a better edge on that one. And I wanted to show it to you. I've actually had this for like a year or something like that. And I never got around to showing it to you guys. But yeah, I'm going to put this down right here. Actually, I'm going to leave it in the open position. Why not? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you these last two. These last two are very similar. I bought this one used. Somebody tried to put their initials here, burn them in there. This is a Gerber Quadrant. And uh, it's okay. I think if this, I don't know if this is bamboo or what that is. Um, it's a uh, frame lock. Um, this is an okay knife. And I, I thought, you know, since I love sheep's foot blades, I thought I'm really going to fall for this knife. But I haven't carried it not even once, guys. And I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to or if I'm going to sell this. The thing about it is, is I find the edge a little troublesome. I don't know why. I'm um, having a difficult time with that edge, sharpening it. I might have to run that through my my, my um, Smith's belt 
uh, sharpener also. Uh, it's okay. I, maybe aesthetically, I'm just bothered by it a little bit, but I got a great deal on it. I think I paid like 12 bucks for this. So, so that's why, uh, you know, somebody had put their initials on it. It was worse than this. I kind of sanded that as much as I could, but it's still in there. Somebody with B and a three or something. I don't know. Or BB. I don't know. But uh, hey, maybe BB, somebody named BB will uh, buy this. I don't know. But I do like it uh, because of that type of edge. And right now it's got a decent edge on it. But I don't know. Something about it just is, is a little bit uh, difficult for me to swallow. I can't imagine. I think it's the aesthetics. But I do like the cleaver style blade. So we're going to leave that over here for you to look at. And then there's this one. That's the Quadrant. That's the Gerber Quadrant. Don't know when it was made, but I think maybe less than 10 years ago. This one's interesting because it's got kind of like a friction folder type of design. It's got a really pretty acrylic type handle. And they make these in like a brown. This is called the, ju the Gerber Jukebox. And again, we have that cleaver blade, right? And I've been doing a little bit of sharpening on this. Not with uh, the Smiths, but with like stones. It's a little bit better, but generally I find that both of these two knives, um, I have a little bit of a hard time sharpening. And I, I don't know why. Um, generally I have like f several different methods that I use to sharpen. Uh, either stones or my Smith's um, belt uh, sharpener or just an easy lap diamond hone rod that I have um, or smaller sharpening stones. Um, I have several different ways to sharpen, but there are some knives that just, it's hard for me to find the angle. And I expect for most people it's like that, unless, you know, they've had a great deal of experience sharpening knives. Um, but I'm going to continue to work on it. I do like this, uh, jukebox. Maybe they call it jukebox because of this psychedelic, uh, acrylic handle that it has. I like that the handle is on both sides as opposed to the quadrant which you only have the bamboo or wood on one side. Uh, that bothers me when I don't see it on both sides but I guess because it's a liner lock it has to be that because it's a frame lock it has to be that way. Um, this is uh, a liner lock so I guess maybe that's why the acrylic is on both sides but, uh, but yeah this is an okay knife. You know, I took this out one time. I have this and we were out at a restaurant. My wife asked for something to cut her hamburger and I gave her this knife and she really liked it. She said, oh, that's a pretty one, you know, and and for that reason, that's probably why I'm going to end up keeping this one. Um, it's just got too many thing, cool things going on, like the friction folder type of uh, tang that extends out here and and just the colorful acrylic that it has, you know. Um, I think that this one's going to stay in my stable uh, just because of that. The Quadrant, I'm probably going to end up selling the Quadrant. Uh, probably won't get much for it. It'll probably go in a knife lot that I'm going to put together. Um, but generally, you know, now I'm thinking that, you know, I have these beautiful knives. And, and uh, you know, I think a lot about what happens when we pass on, you know, who gets our knives. And... I, I, I try and tell my daughter about them and how much, you know, they're worth and so forth or how much to sell them for and where the prices are. I have them like tiered in my big toolbox, like the top tier is like a hundred dollars or more bottom tier is like $50 or second tier, $50 or more and then so forth. And, and, uh, I try and explain that to her so that she has an idea in case something happens to me, what to sell them for. But, uh, honestly, you know, we have no control over that. And that's why a lot of us sometimes find really good deals on knives. And the thought about that, sometimes thinking about where these knives came from, the previous owner, their history, how they were used, all of those things weigh heavily on me. So whenever I get a used knife, you know, I, I hold it, I think about it, and yes, I, I say a little prayer that, you know, that it's used in good will and that... Um, that I hope that the previous owner is doing well or is is getting a blessing or is blessed. And only because, you know, we don't know where these knives come from, right? Uh, not in, in this one, because I know this one came from my good friend, David Curley. So thank you, David. But in the case of others that we might have, especially the real old ones, right? The real old ones have a lot of history to them. So just food for thought, something to think about uh, on this Sunday from the Knife Detector. If you guys like videos about knives, I've got so many different playlists for you guys to check out. So please check them out when you get a chance. Please like and subscribe to my channel. 
Um, I do giveaways every once in a while. I just haven't had time to do one recently. Uh, so please, you know, stay tuned, enjoy my videos. And if you like knives or just talking about knives, then this might be the place for you. Y'all take care. God bless. Please like and subscribe.